how do I hold this microphone? How do I, how do I professional? Also, do I sound really sick? Cause I'm not anymore. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah and I'm going to talk about some books today. This month was a pretty good reading month, I will say. And I think it's only because I'm literally in between jobs right now. I quit my job a few weeks ago and my next one should be starting in a couple of weeks as well. So I had some downtime, baby. I also went on a reading retreat staycation thing that you can see in the previous vlogs. That also happened and helped me read a bunch of books this week, this month. Oh, so let's talk about them books, shall we? Okay, so the first book that I read was actually the audiobook of Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. I listened to that audiobook on the way up to visit my long distance boyfriend and literally the only phrase I could repeat to myself in order to keep my brain sane is that's crazy because it literally was just crazy from start to finish. Not that it was completely unrealistic but for my brain to not completely <laughs> I guess hate your protagonist? I had to consistently tell myself, that's so crazy. That's so crazy that realistically, that's what somebody would think in real life, right? Like logically, yeah, someone could think like that. I don't want to spoil too much. And if you don't know what this book is about, it's basically about this character. Gosh, I never have the physical copies. So I don't know what these character names are. I just remember what happens in this story. Athena, ha ha ha. I know that one. Um, by the way, I just <laughs> scooted up and I, I just saw my sweater. Like it? I used to wear it a lot last year, and now it's sweater weather again. I forgot, like, the actual protagonist's name. Basically, it's about this white author who is best friends with this Asian-American author, more specifically Chinese-American. Athena, the Asian-American author, passes away, and this white author is like, hmm, well, there's this manuscript that she has, and it's not completed yet, so... I guess it's just on me and my divine destiny to finish this and publish it under a different name. What's crazy is at some points I really felt empathy for the white author. For all of these events to happen after that, I'm like, okay, that kind of sucks. Maybe she doesn't deserve all of that, but also it's kind of like girl karma. Interesting that it's also like a nod to the publishing industry. So I thought that that was just completely brilliant. On Goodreads, I think I gave it a four out of five. And I wrote in my review that I was debating whether to give it a four or a five because the writing is so good. Like it's so good to hate this character, but also you feel for her at some points, which is really difficult to do. I think that way about certain actors who play villains really, really well. For example, Sebastian Crow. Uh Sebastian Croft. Yeah, that's his name. He plays Ben Hope in the Heartstopper series, and it's so, so good to hate that kid. But also, you just see his TikToks, and he seems like the sweetest kid. He seems like the most fun. So you're like, wow, mad props to this actor. That's how I felt reading this. I'm like, I really want to like you. I really, I, I, I want to see the humanity of this, and also, sorry that your industry sucks. And here's the thing that I thought of. Some people, some people might read this book and just feel completely bad for her. Like, she doesn't deserve any of that. I totally understand. She was in the right. And that was what also was blowing my mind as I was listening to this book. I was like, that's crazy. That's what's crazy. So after that, I really needed like an uplifter. <laughs> I needed a palate cleanser. So I picked up and read well, that was unexpected by Jesse Q. Sutanto. Last month, I read Didn't See That Coming. Didn't know that that was the second part of this series. It's in the same universe, but it's not exactly a sequel, if that makes sense. I don't know what that's called. But this one was really cute. I liked Didn't See That Coming a little bit more. I think I just enjoyed those characters more. She was more nerdy and gamer. I don't think I've ever read a trope like this either. Well, it's kind of fake dating, but the way they got into the fake dating was really strange so charlotte and george clooney that's this kid their parents want to set them up with someone they would approve of so they find these two kids online and start messaging each other and just catfishing each other until they meet and then it's like well 
I don't know if you know, but I've been catfishing you and you've been talking to my mother. Or I don't know if you know, but I've been catfishing you and be talking to my dad and my sister. All I'm going to say is, well, that was unexpected. And so the next one that I started reading is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I read The Seven Year Slip first. And then I read this one. See, here's the thing. I am such a wuss. I don't do creepy, not creepy. This isn't really creepy. I don't really do like supernatural stuff. I don't do horror movies. I don't do psychological thrillers. I mean, she's talking to a ghost and that's kind of her whole shtick. So Florence is a ghost writer for this really popular romance novelist. She is set to publish another great romance novel but due to this unexpected passing of her father she immediately goes straight home where she is then haunted by the ghost of her editor editor her editor i will say what i do like about ashley poston is that she does romance and sci-fi very well it's a really good mix of both i kind of like how this all went down so in romances you're like oh okay well there's outside circumstances that probably bring a lot of conflict with this he's dead so that's the conflict with seven years slip the guy lives seven years in the past that's the conflict what's the conflict is time and that's really tricky i don't know why i'm wearing the book like a hat But she wraps it up so well where it doesn't necessarily take you out of the story and just go, okay, well, of course you would just throw in something like that. It's like, whoa, okay, that's, I didn't even, what? So immediately after that, I started reading When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I've been wanting to read this one for a really long time because I hear it gives really cute fall vibes. Amelia is a pop star and she gets stranded in somewhere super random called Rome, Kentucky. She was actually on her way there because she's really into the Audrey Hepburn film When in Rome. Uh, right? No, Roman Holiday. This book is called When in Rome. The movie she likes is Roman Holiday. Got it. So her car breaks down right in front of this guy's lawn and he's like, I don't do strangers. I don't do random people get out what was selling it for me was the blurb was written by abby jimenez which if you know me you know i love abby jimenez i don't read a lot of grumpy sunshine kind of tropes and romances but this one was really good and i like how he doesn't necessarily shed his grumpy kind of uh not persona but his kind of facade necessarily right away it's still kind of there she doesn't just crack him up and is like ah this is the kind of guy that i am you did it congratulations i think in my goodreads review i did say at some point their banter and the dialogue seemed a little bit forced obviously she's traveling by herself so she's terrified as frick and then all of a sudden she's like oh what do you banter with this guy that's not logical you know you don't just do that She's like, oh, a big scary man who lives in the woods, but also a hot sexy man who lives in the woods. Like, no, girl, what? No. But I actually started reading that one because I wanted to read Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. And a lot of people on the internet rave about this book. And honestly, I can understand why. I don't know why I'm holding these books over here like they're a parrot and I'm a pirate. Oh, segue. (laughs) If you know, you know. So this is also in the same universe as When in Rome, but it's not exactly a sequel. Well, actually, the cool part is it kind of is like a sequel. Like Amelia and Noah's story from When in Rome continues in this one, but it's not necessarily the highlight. It's kind of like supporting this story, which is super cool. So Annie is Noah's youngest sister and Will, who is this guy, is Amelia's bodyguard or executive protective agent, something like that. He doesn't like being called a bodyguard. It's a bad boy, good girl kind of trope. Friends to lovers. It's cute. It was such a good journey. I love how they start to become their own person as they start to fall for each other. Annie is like a complete introvert and a hardcore reader. And I feel that. (laughs) I think any introvert who reads is like, this is how I want to find the love of my life. (laughs) So yesterday I went to my local library to edit my videos and get some work done because i've been lacking in motivation lately but i also found some books that i wanted to read this one was a pretty quick read i think i read it in like an hour and a half or so the blurb was written by alice oseman who wrote the heartstopper series i also love alice oseman it's called if you'll have me by an author named uni e-u-n-n-i-e ah this one was super cute so basically it's about these two 
girls I almost hit myself in the face with this book <sighs> it's basically about these two girls they have different personalities and they have different reputations among their friends in college and they somehow find each other and start falling for each other and start to reveal more of their true personalities and what they really like and who they really are to each other it's one of those ones that deals with somewhat kind of heavier topics when it comes to relationships and friendships and the way you view yourself and the way others view you but it keeps it kind of lighthearted, kind of like heartstopper which is probably why alice osman did a little little what is this this is a blurb or review the illustration is really beautiful and i don't know how else to describe it it's like organized very neatly so it's pretty easily digestible if you need a palate cleanser with great queer and poc representation this one is your read okay so what i'm currently reading is sunny song will never be famous by suzanne park sunny song is internet famous and she has been internet famous since she was a kid her mom made this viral video of her as a child and she's just known for that and then she took that upon herself as a teenager and built a whole brand through this other viral video that wasn't meant to be viral or meant to go out there and was kind of misinterpreted by her fair her her parents her parents she is sent to some camp to do a digital detox it's funny it's a little sarcastic i think the author was a stand-up comedian and it kind of reads like a stand-up comedy kind of set where like an event is happening and then you get into the mind of the character and she goes really into it and she you know kind of lets you know her thoughts and her thoughts are relatable and funny Right now I'm in chapter 11. I'm this much into it. Actually, the day I'm filming this is a week before this comes out. So hopefully by then I'll probably read either one of these books. Hold on one second. I've been saying this. It's been on my TBR for months now. Yours truly by Abby Jimenez. I know. I know. I just haven't gone around to it because I found other stuff. The other one I was thinking of I actually picked up at the library as well. And I found out it was new. Rainbow Rowell's slow dance a novel okay so those were my october reads let's get into my very ambitious november tbr okay so this is just a generalized this is what i would like to read in november i don't think i'm gonna get into everything because oh, i'm gonna be busy next month okay so this one i'm for sure gonna read I keep saying this about all of them, but I'm sure gonna read this. I think I got this at Half Off Books, and I've been waiting to the month of November to read this, so I'm gonna do that. The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. This is for the Native Americans. I really want to get into this one because I started reading a little bit at the store, and it sounded really funny. And then at the end of the month, I'm going on a trip to Japan. So to prep for that, or either on the plane or something like that, I want to read Took You Ever After by Emiko Jean and Tokyo Dreaming also by Emiko Jean. I hear it's like a Princess Diaries kind of story so I think that'd be really fun especially because I'll be on my way to Japan. Like how fitting is that? I meant to read this during my reading retreat staycation thing. Um, Maybe Meant to Be by K.L. Walther and Summer Broken Rolls but I didn't get to do that so I'm hoping to read those this month or at least listen to the audiobook to get me started. Also at the library um, because sometimes a girl just needs a little graphic novel quick pick-me-up type deal. Karate Prom by Kyle Starks. Sometimes you just need a little wacky adventure you know. I've been kind of on the fence about purchasing it so I thought I'd borrow it from the library first. This is called A Fa Love Story by Joan Lee. From what I'm reading in the back and from what I've heard I guess a little bit if I've heard anything about it it's like Romeo and Juliet but Vietnamese and about pho. That sounds fun. I'm so sorry. I gotta end the video. So in the comments, let me know what books you read this month, what you're wanting to read in the next month. If you've read any of these already, let me know your thoughts. Ah, I don't know. I just love geeking out with people about stuff. So let's talk about books. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Happy Halloween. Bye.